Hi, this is Steve, sometimes known as your friendly neighborhood man in magenta wig. And I apologize, it's been a little while since I've made one of these videos, and to be honest, one of the reasons for that is I keep having to redo it. You know, I did it before, the sound got messed up, there was a lot of background noise, and for some reason my head was just in an odd place that day. I, did, I rambled for like 25 minutes straight, so this time I'm going to get it right. This is part four of my Madonna-thon. So, if you forget where we left off, the last album I covered was 1989's Like a Prayer. Now at this point, she's shaking off that material girl image, she's starting to mature and starting to experiment with a lot of different styles. That brings us up to 1990, and of course the early 90s were the most controversial part of her career, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. First, we have to cover the first album of the 90s, I'm Breathless. Now, I'm Breathless might be her most overlooked album because for some reason, this just isn't considered part of her core catalog. I mean, there was a box set that came out some years back that had all of her albums up to, um, I, I think maybe MDNA, I don't, I don't think it had Rebel Heart in it. But anyway, I'm Breathless is not in it, which is odd because all the songs on this album are new and they're all Madonna. The thing is, this is often miscategorized as the soundtrack to Dick Tracy, which Madonna co-starred in, but it really isn't. Uh, only three songs out of 12 are actually from that movie. What this is, though, and this might be the reason she doesn't really consider it essential to her catalog, is mostly an album in character as her Dick Tracy persona, Breathless Mahoney, who's kind of a sultry 1940s nightclub singer. And as you might expect, a lot of the songs on this are in that style, you know, sooner or later, something to remember, and that kind of, you know, sweeping, dramatic 1940s nightclub style. But there are a lot of other different styles on display here, too. He's a Man is sort of a, uh, almost reminds me of like a early 1960s James Bond theme, you know, uh, a Shirley Bassey kind of song that you'd, you'd expect to start a movie, even though, oddly enough, I don't think that's actually in the movie. Um, and some songs on this are really funny, like Hanky Panky, which is still one of her signature songs and is possibly the only hit song ever about spanking. Uh, <laughs> Cry Baby is a great funny song. Um, I'm Going Bananas, which Admittedly, um, it, it's a funny song, but it kind of gives me bad flashbacks of that awful episode of SNL that she hosted. She did a sketch where she was like a, a Spanish variety show host named Marika. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just tried watching that episode again recently, and it never gets easier. I, I made it like 10 minutes in, because I, I have the original airing of that, which, um, if you know your SNL history was one of the most disastrous live shows they ever did. So if you want to see Madonna host SNL in 1985, get, get the rerun version. But anyway, another great song I really like, which is in the movie, is More, which is a parody of I've Got Rhythm, which it, it basically takes the line, who could ask for anything more, and answers it with, well, she can, and she'll tell you about it. I love that song. We also get a couple duets with her Dick Tracy co-stars. Uh, for example, Now I'm Following You has Warren Beatty on it. And Now I'm Following You is really cool because while most of the CD is like 1940s style, you know, very, you know, orchestrated and brassy, Now I'm Following You actually brings us back up to date because the song is split into two separate tracks. The first part of the song is the 1940s style, then the record skips, she fixes the record, and suddenly we're in a 90s dance remix of that song. So very cool. That brings us up to, because uh, now I'm following you, the second part of the song is track 11. That brings us up to track 12, which is a really odd inclusion. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's on here just because she had to push it, because uh, it was her most recent single, and they had to do something with it. Track 12 is Vogue. Vogue is actually from this album, and it doesn't really have any connection to the movie at all. I mean, obviously it's one of her best-known songs, but... They did try to wedge it into commercials for the movie, but it's it's clearly, you know, not in the Breathless Mahoney character. You know, it's very 1990s. It's it's very the Madonna we know, but it's just an odd, odd way to end the CD. You know, you, you kind of wish it ended with Now I'm Following You and Vogue would have been saved for, like, the Immaculate Collection, because that came out not too long after this, but, yeah. Other than that one oddity, you know, and granted, I do like Vogue. It just doesn't belong here. 
I love the CD. You know, I haven't seen Dick Tracy, you know, but I get the point of the CD. And like I said, this isn't really a soundtrack to Dick Tracy anyway. It's basically a concept album as her character, so you can enjoy it on its own merits. A lot of great songs here, definitely not worth overlooking like a lot of people seem to do. So yeah, check out I'm Breathless. This is, this is a really great album. And as we move further into the early 90s, we get to that part of her career, the most controversial part of her career. Because as she was moving away from the Material Girl image, she wanted to go daring. She wanted to go sort of a, an amped up Marilyn Monroe for the 90s, but like full on sex kitten image. And in the end, a lot of people just considered this her sort of creator breakdown period. You know, a lot of people have asked her, do you regret this period of her career? Which she doesn't really, but it got her in a hell of a lot of trouble at the time. You know, she put out the sex book, she did a movie called Body of Evidence, it's kind of like a, an erotic thriller. Um, around this time she put out the Immaculate Collection, which had Justify My Love, and it's very, very controversial music video. And she followed up Justify My Love with the album Erotica. Um, Erotica is her most controversial album, and Especially if you're listening to her albums in order, she's she stayed kind of clean cut up until now. Um, you know, she's she skirted controversial topics before, like with Papa Don't Preach and Like a Version, but she has now earned herself the parental advisory label. Now, the thing about this album is not every copy has that label, and the first one I bought didn't. Um, the major difference I can tell between the two, because like the lone f bomb is still bleeped on the. Uh, sticker version is the song Did You Do It um, is not on the version without the parental advisory sticker and it's honestly since I bought the CD twice since I realized I was missing a song the first time around it's not worth it. Did You Do It's the living definition of filler track and it's not even a Madonna song it's just some other rapper doing a song about sleeping with Madonna. So yeah if you get the non-sticker version it's not essential but you might think, you know, since this was that part of her career, since she did earn the sticker, is this album full on raunch? You know, is she living up to the sexy name? Not really. You know, it, it, it's a mixed bag. I mean, the track erotica is in, sort of in the uh, Justify My Love vein. You know, she doesn't really get that edgy through most of the album, um, except the song Where Life Begins, which I, I had never heard before I listened to the CD all the way through uh, for this video. and. It's actually really funny to hear for the first time, especially the part where she compares herself to KFC Chicken and that she's finger licking good. Yeah, that gave me a laugh on the way. <laughs> that gave me a laugh on the way to work. But yeah, otherwise, you know, it's a very '90s sounding album. You know, some songs on this are very suited to the '90s dance club. Uh, deeper and deeper, uh, Fever, um, which is especially interesting because I've heard that um, her decision to do a dance cover of Fever was inspired by Little Nell's version, which obviously, you know, I being a Rocky fan, I'd be familiar with. Um, I don't know if that's true. If it is true, maybe someone can confirm it. That's just something I've heard a few times in the past, so I'd be, I'd be interested to know, because, you know, Nell's version was a little more obscure, but we do get to hear the introduction of Bitter Madonna, though, which every now and then, you know, throughout the 90s, and especially her 2000s albums, we get some really nasty, bitter songs where it just, just seems like she's venting about something. It's kind of interesting to hear, because we haven't heard this before. You know, Bye Bye Baby is one, and uh, Thief of Hearts, where she's constantly referring to somebody as a bitch. We don't know who. Um, Rain is a more mainstream song, uh, more, you know, pop radio oriented, kind of a, a smooth chill out song, you know, the, the commercial, the commercial entry into this album. And Secret Garden is interesting. It's an interesting track to end on because it's, you know, her whispering lyrics over this like driving hip hop beat. It really sets up what's coming in the next album. Um, it's it's very very reminiscent of what she would do in bedtime stories, but yeah, you know I like this album. You know it it hasn't dated well, especially when you realize you know this this was just this was a relic of just that part of her career, the sex part of her career surrounding that book, and I think unfortunately in the end that book might have overshadowed this because I think this came out like within a couple of days. But yeah, this video we're starting off strong. Uh, I'm Breathless was a great album. Erotica, it's a mixed bag, but it's good. It's good. You know, it has its ups and downs, but it's enjoyable. Now we move on to bedtime stories. 
I don't like this album. I mean, I get what she was trying to do, you know? She was trying to make sort of the same, you know, sort of the same persona she was in with Erotica, but uh, a softer and less controversial side, you know? She doesn't go full raunch on any tracks on this, and obviously she didn't earn the sticker on this one either, but I just don't like this album. I mean, I I get that it's it's a very 90s album, you know? it. It sounds like it's it's very R&B flavored. It sounds more suited to like TLC or Janet Jackson. It's just not Madonna kind of songs though, you know? And this does have a couple big songs, obviously, Secrets on it, and you gotta love an ode to masturbation because as she says, happiness lies in your own hand or somebody else's if you listen to Forbidden Love. And Take a Bow was on it, which was a big hit. You still hear it on the radio even to this day, but I've listened to this album three times now for this marathon, and each time I feel like I miss something. You know, when I go back and think, was there anything that really stuck out to me that I really liked, that I really remember? No, I have a lot of trouble remembering the songs on this album, because they're just sort of the same, you know, Madonna trying to do Janet Jackson kind of thing, but, I mean... There are some interesting songs on it. I mean, Human Nature. Human Nature I really like because I like the sentiment of it. It's basically her directly responding to the controversy that happened a couple years before. You know, it has that great chorus. I didn't, oops, I didn't know I couldn't talk about sex. I must have been crazy. You know, I, I love stuff like that where people take their real life beefs and just put them in a song. You know, they just vent on record. You can feel what they're going through at the time. And I really appreciate that. Um... The, the song Bedtime Story, the title track, is just so strange and abstract, and I, I admit it made a lot more sense when I realized the song was co-written by Bjork, of all people, you know, it's, once you know that, it's like, yeah, this is a Bjork song, this is not a Madonna song, but this album just leaves me cold, man, it just, eh. You know, they, they can't all be winners, but, I mean, we're moving on to better things after this, so I'm okay, I, I can forgive this one. Now, the thing about Take a Bow is, um, that was one of the songs around that time period that started to show the softer side, which was, you know, kind of a relief after the big controversial period, and it wasn't really something we heard a lot from Madonna anyway up until now. Um, another song from this time period was uh, I'll Remember, which isn't on this album, but it was it was in a movie called With Honors. And the thing about this album is, and I, I think my mind sort of set up an expectation that it didn't, that the album didn't meet, and another one did. Um, shh, sirens. Oh, that was convenient. That actually worked. <laughs> anyway, um... For some reason, I thought, you know, after the Erotica album and stuff, that she put out an album that where she really totally just went soft, like the complete 360 or 180, I guess 180, because 360 would go all the way, 180 from Erotica, and she put out an album that, would, that had, like, I'll Remember, and songs in that vein, and it doesn't really live up to that because, like I said, she, she carries on that harder edge that she started with Secret Garden. The album that does fulfill that, though, if you want, you know, that side of her, is Something to Remember, which came out after this. It's a comp it's a compilation, so I'll cover that in the last part of this series. But, if, yeah, if you want to hear that sort of, like, ballad 90s Madonna style, Something to Remember is the way to go. But bedtime stories just leave me cold. Sorry. Like I said, can't all be winners? Can't all be winners? All right, so fingers crossed this video came out okay. I'll do something with it if it didn't, because I really don't want to do this part again. <laughs> I, I want to move on into the late 90s, because, I mean, I love Ray of Light. Ray of Light is the first Madonna album I heard all the way through, and I love that album. I mean, that's one of the... that's That album basically inspired me to do this marathon. So, until then... Hopefully this video is okay and you'll be seeing it in the next couple days. I am Steve, also known as your friendly neighborhood man of Magenta Wig, and I thank you for sticking with me through the first four parts, and I will see you in part five of my Madonna-thon. Have a good evening.